Hi, neighbor. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. And you? I'm good too. Thank you. You're in Korea, right? Yes. Oh, it says you're in Japan. I'm in Japan. Ah, so that's why you said hi, neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> cool. uh, you see, I am a language teacher myself, and the reason okay. I'm here on Cambly is because I want to ask and have a discussion with my fellow teachers about yeah. what makes a good teacher, basically. So yeah. I prepared a list with uh, some questions and statements. And sure. So I'd like to hear your thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. Is that okay? Okay, good. How long have you been teaching English for? Um, on Cambly, I've been teaching since, I guess, the end of January. But I've been doing on and off tutoring with people I know and in schools for maybe six or seven years. Not six as a full-time job, just part-time here and there. Yeah, yeah, that's a long time. Yeah. So my first question is, what's the role of the language teacher? Oh, um, my personal opinion is the role is to make the student, I guess, comfortable in learning the language, not just give the facts, but kind of help the student feel comfortable in learning the facts and inspired to keep studying. So when you say give the facts, uh, do you mean uh, teach vocabulary and grammar? Yeah, it can be. I guess some people, I know some teachers like to focus on just, like, I'll explain the grammar, and if you don't get it, that's your problem. I did my job. That's what some teachers think, but I think it's more... But the, um, that's what you mean by give the facts, right? Yes, yeah. Uh, give uh, vocabulary and grammar. Yeah. Because what I read somewhere is that uh, teaching is not about being a human dictionary. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. So, I mean, I guess we would both agree that uh, giving the facts is not actually teaching. Yeah, of course, teaching involves giving facts, but it's there's a lot more to it than that. A lot, I, I guess. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, their dictionaries are basically free. Yeah. I don't know if you've used uh, dictionaries like uh, Longman, Cambridge, Oxford. A long time ago, I have. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's something else I read. The role of the language teacher is to teach the student how to learn alone without a teacher, how to become an independent learner. Yeah, I, I agree with that. that. Uh, I think the best teachers can almost work the, work until they lose their job, in a sense. Like the, the student, the goal should be not the student keeps coming back because eventually the student will be comfortable enough that they don't have to take they don't have to take lessons anymore. Of course, we want jobs and we want them to, but so they, that's my issue. Yeah, that, yeah that's uh, one of the main reasons I'm here. It's because uh, <laughs> I feel my job is to teach them how not to pay me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of weird. It's like uh, shooting myself in the foot. <laughs> when we talk about teach the student how to learn alone, do you have any techniques uh, you can share with me? Ooh. Um, so one of the things I teach is basically what I just said, how to use a dictionary, Yeah, which to me is huge. Anything else you want to share? Something you use a dictionary and think how to, just how to get used to different situations of using the language. Like in the case of, I use a lot of teaching with music. So um, in music, like if you, they have the lyrics, how to kind of hear the different sounds and use it, I guess, use the different sounds and hearing it so that I can use that in movies or speaking in everyday life. So how they can... But how, how do you help them become independent? So there I'd say these are, I guess, the tips to, if you want, if you were preparing to sing the song or to give a speech. So we practice like repeating in these ways, almost like a rhythm. And then they can apply those to the next song or the next speech that they, or the script that they try and learn. So focus on just the rhythm and the sounds and different okay. techniques to speak better. The next thing I'd like to ask you is, um, it's to me, it's kind of strange the way Cambly recruits teachers. It says, mm -hmm. uh, what was it? Get paid to chat with people from around the world. Yes. So my question is, have you ever paid to chat with people in another language? Um, no, I have not. Would you? If it was not very expensive, I would but it would have to be very cheap for that kind of marketing to get to me. I think 
the study with someone else would appeal to me a lot more. So yeah, that's uh, again the other reason I'm here is that in a way I feel I am providing a service I wouldn't pay for. Yeah. You know what I mean? You you've never paid for a conversation. I've never paid for a conversation. Yeah. And I would never pay for a conversation. And to me, again, I felt that I'm providing. A, I was. I used to. I stopped doing that. But I used to provide a service I wouldn't pay for. Yeah. Kind of felt made me feel very uncomfortable. Yeah. Actually, I feel the same way quite often as well. Okay. And so I. I guess each student, especially on Cambly, some students come looking for different things. So some students will say they really like they don't understand this kind of maybe a grammar concept and they want to work on that or they want to work on a specific thing. So I feel better about the job myself when I can actually the student has a goal and I can help them with their goal. And if someone is very fluent in English and we're just talking like friends, I do feel kind of uncomfortable, like they're paying me. But for what? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. it feels like I'm using exactly. them. Almost. Yes, exactly. Same here. My next question is: Would a native speaker of your language, would a native speaker of English, pay money to talk with you? Uh, most likely, no. You see, this all these points kind of make me feel uncomfortable because, to me, language is a tool for acquiring knowledge. Yes. For most people, but you just said uh, uh, a few minutes ago that, you know, they want to practice their English. To me, practice means acquire knowledge. Yeah. And that there's nothing I can give them. I mean, the only thing I can teach them is how to learn alone. Yeah. That's the only knowledge I can give them. I'm not an expert in, um, I don't know. I, I, I know business. I studied business, but nobody comes to me to study business. Yeah. They come here to study English, and English is knowledge. Uh, language is knowledge. Yeah. Language is a tool for acquiring knowledge, and there are, there is no knowledge in the classroom. Yeah, I I completely agree with that. I think for me, I'm interested in studying languages, and for me, I've learned a lot better and I've absorbed more of the language when I try and kind of use the language to learn something else, and I think that's the key. Not and, the key. That's the yeah. only way. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. That's not the key. There's, there's nothing else. Yeah. Language is a tool for acquiring knowledge. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. And I, that's what I try and emphasize a lot. One, one thing that I usually mention in my classes is that it's the way, like the best language learners are babies. And of course, there's differences in the brain and things like that. But one thing that babies and children and all the way until teenagers that they do is they don't focus on, oh, I need to learn this for a test. They just live their life and they learn different things in school using that language. True language. But that's, yeah. no, no, man, that's, I, I would disagree that children are better uh, learners. They're better at acquiring accent because yes. of the brain. But adults are much faster and better learners because yes. we can read from day one. Yes, I, I completely agree with that. But I that's think... how we acquire knowledge. That's yeah. our own, only advantage because knowledge we acquire through reading. Yeah. And babies can't read. Yeah, and we understand the concepts already. So I think that's what another thing, I yes. see holds a lot of people back is they have to kind of just remove themselves from their native language. And their brain already, like you said, works so much better than a child and a baby. Their brain is so much smarter and more intelligent we can but, read and we can use dictionaries this is a huge yeah. advantage i mean dictionaries and reading that they're kind of connected huge advantage over babies yeah. accent exactly. is something we we uh struggle with as adults uh, over yes. babies but that's not an issue that's not an yeah. issue yeah yeah uh learn something through the language not yeah. learn english but learn something through english yeah, and exactly. but the problem for people, especially people in Japan, I think Korea is probably a little better. They have so much information in Japanese. Yes, they have yeah. so, and that's the case with you guys, native speaker of English. The reason you struggle with foreign languages is because you have an abundance of yeah. good quality information, not just any information, good stuff. Yeah, 
I think that's why when I mention to people, I when I tell people, oh, babies are really good, not because their brains are better, but because they have to use a language. If they don't learn that, they can't eat. But use, uh, sorry to interrupt, use means consume information. This is what people right. struggle to understand. Babies absorb so much through listening. And yeah. then when you said, when they, we go to school, read and learn all these other subjects through through the language. Yeah. This is what use actually means and people think that use means speak yeah no use means get information yeah. if you really want to know how to learn a foreign language you need to read my book virtually native which is available on amazon and virtually native.com You have one life, don't waste it.